Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be walking you through how I make an all cork dolly bag. This pattern is by Swoon and it is free and available on swoonpatterns.com. So go there and pick up your copy and let's get sewing. All right, so to get started on making the dolly mini crossbody, I have all of my pieces cut. So I have the vinyl accent piece here, one outer body piece, and this is gonna lay on top of that like so. I have two flat pieces. This is gonna be my outer, and then this will be my inside. I have the back bottom piece, and then the back top piece. I have my straps here. I have my uh, gusset. This is the outside, and then the lining. And then I have the back bottom pocket, and then the lining of the pocket. And then the two main, insides, my strap connectors, and I have two um, little flap pieces. I don't remember what they called these. Oh, the snap tab, duh. So two snap tabs and I've just glued the tops together so far. Um, and then of course I have all of my hardware, which is over here off the side. So the first thing that I am going to talk about is the pocket piece. If you look at the original pattern, it gives you this piece and it's the main panel as well as the pocket panel. So after you cut the main panel full size, you're supposed to fold this under on the dash and then cut one exterior and one lining for the pocket. But I found that it, at this height, what it does is it is in the same seam as the flap and as the pocket and as the gusset and it's just, it gets super, super bulky along the back sides. So what I've done is I've shortened it even more and I made my own panel. And if you can see, I took it down an extra inch. I'm pretty sure here, let me just measure. So just about uh, an inch, 1.25. I just took it down from the folded edge. I took it down an extra 1.25. So that's how I like to do my pocket. And feel free to do yours however you like, but that's what I do for mine. And then on the flap, these indentions at the top are usually only a quarter inch, and I've made mine a half an inch. And that also helps during construction, which will come later, obviously, when this will come into play. But to make it easier on myself, I went ahead and cut out a new flat piece as well instead of using the one that came with the pattern. So the first thing that I'm gonna prep is the back bottom, the pocket. Um, and just to prep this, I'm just gonna put the lining and the main right sides together and clip at the top. And then we're gonna sew along that in a minute. And then I'm going to glue my two flat pieces together. You can see that I do not have my indentions cut out on the top of this flat piece because I find that when using raw edge cork, I think it's easier to cut one at the shape that I need and then I will cut out, after I've top stitched these together, I will cut the indentions off of the eggplant cork and that way I can get all of my edges to be the same and nice and flush. So I'm just gonna glue this into place Right. And then I need to add my female portion of my snap onto my exterior main panel. So I've already marked it per the pattern piece. And I'm just going to install it. I'm just going to put a piece of scrap interfacing over the back. I know a lot of people use um, duct tape as well if you have that on hand. All right, so next for the exterior front piece, we need to put the accent piece. So I'm just going to burn my edges real quick. And 
And then I'm just gonna run glue along this top curve. And then in order to make sure that it's even, I like to line it up on my mat. And then you can make sure that these top edges are even. There we go. While that glue sets, I need to install my snap tab snap. And I'm just going to mark. This is the male portion going in here. I know that a lot of people um, fold these prongs in toward each other. Um, I do it this way because when they're folded in toward each other, it makes it so bulky back there so I just try to um, keep the bulk down fold them away from each other and then put interfacing on the back to hold it in place which again that's just how I do it it's not um, you know industry standard so do as you will so I like this piece, so this piece is going to be getting a lot of action and it is um, going to be pulled, you know, because it goes right here. So this is what's constantly going to be pulled on and um, a lot of tension being put on it. So I'm just going to put a couple pieces of scrap interfacing here. And you can see I just kind of roughly traced it onto my interfacing. So I'm just going to glue this down. Double-sided tape works here as well if you prefer that. I find that gums up my needle just a bit. And then I'm going to also put a second piece because I've noticed that in some of the bags that I've made in the past, the snap, even though I put one piece of interfacing, the snap on this soft side where it's not installed um, it starts to wear and you can see through it so I'm just going to put a second piece of interfacing on here as well so I'm just kind of feeling the edges here and doing a rough mark for the interfacing I have made probably 15 if not 20 dollies so these amendments are um, just an evolution over the last four years of what I find to be the most helpful when I'm making this so feel free to not take any of my uh, changes in mind when you make your own 
Um, this is just how I do it. So now I've got my interfacing pieces within my two cork pieces and I glued that down. And so next we are just going to move over to the machine and uh, get sewing. So the first thing I'm going to top stitch is my two flat pieces together and I'm going to start on the side that I've already cut my indentions out of. And I am using a Schmetz uh, Microtex needle and three and a half stitch length. And this is a Juki TL 2010Q, so I know you'll ask. I did contrast stitching on that side. All right now I've got my two pocket, my back pocket pieces and I'm just gonna stitch across the top here. I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm just gonna finger press open the way that I always do. Top stitch this. And then now I'm just going to top stitch around just the top of this curve here. I'm actually going to pick these stitches and bring this side in a little closer. You can see it just kind of went, I went above my 1 8 seam allowance here. And that would be enough to drive me crazy. Even though my customer probably wouldn't even notice, I just can't. Much better. Alrighty then. So now I want to put my tag on this back pocket here. So I'm gonna flip this lining piece back up and just place my tag where I want it to go. I usually do a half inch from the top seam and of course centered. And then I need to trim my flap. I made the mistake of snipping something with just the tip of these scissors and they're so dull now. That is the real thing. A super annoying real thing. Scissors are so sensitive. And then I'm gonna cut this down to be a 
um, and one eighth seam allowance here. And so for the majority of it, I just have to trim the eggplant cork underneath it. But if there's any sections where I took it a little bit wide on my seam, I'm going to trim it up. going to hit these edges with a lighter. I just had somebody ask me about why I do this. So basically when you're working with cork it puts off these little tiny like hairs and the lighter just obviously it burns all of those off and I always burn my edges before I glue because it just takes off all those little fuzzies and then when I'm gluing, it doesn't like peel them up at all. So I'm just gonna do this before the purse is actually constructed on the flat because it'll make this a lot easier. I did get leather edge paint, the Giardini paint. Um, and I like the beige paint on the natural corks, but I also got black, and I, I've only used the black once. I put it on the edges of a bifold wallet that I made out of olive cork, and I just wasn't super pleased with the way that it looks. I find that the glue goes on quicker, dries faster, and it dries clear, and it just allows me to do it, like do the step during construction without having to take time off or wait. So I don't know. I will likely just stick with my glue, but the Giardini paint does make a nice edge if you can get it to look nice. And then um, this glue is Aline's Fabric Fusion. That's my edge glue. And then the glue that I'm using to hold stuff together is Fabri-Tac. Alrighty, so now that this is done, the flap is constructed, I'm going to center it on my mat. And I'm going to be laying this snap tab down and you want this to be centered. All right, so, oh, I forgot. I need to glue these edges too. I need to tighten up these lines as well. Right, I'm going to glue these edges too. You'll notice I have not stitched this yet because I'm going to stitch it to the flap and stitch these snap pieces together at the same time. So this is a little bit unorthodox already finishing the edges, but once this snap tab is placed onto the flap, it's going to be really hard to glue these edges without getting glue all over the snap or all over the flap.
a lot of times while the glue is still wet, I'll relight it and just kind of tap it onto my mat. If I disturbed the edge of the cork and I got any little phrase that came up. Okay. Now I'm ready to glue it down. So I'm just going to put some glue starting around the middle of the snap tab. See, I didn't put glue all the way down because this is going to overhang. So I just put it from the middle up, get my flap laid out again, and then I'm just going to center this and glue it down. And then next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew all the way down and around this but you have to be careful because the um you want to sew on the top of this flap so that you can see what you're doing here but we have the snap tab here so what i'm going to do what you'll see me do is i'm going to sew all the way down to the edge and i'm going to stop and do the same on this side and then i'm going to flip it over and sew around the bottom so that i can see what i'm doing here and keep this snap out of the way so again unorthodox but hey welcome to my sewing channel I do what I want. Um, all right, so I think, yep, I'm just gonna pop over the machine and top stitch those. Say hi. There's rookies. You say hi. Say hi, everybody. Hmm. Go get your bone. Go on. Uh uh. No. Get down. Okay, get down. Go get your bone, buddy. Go. Hey, hey, hey. Alright, so I'm going to continue sewing from this side. And I didn't backstitch at the end. Of these long lines on the front side, so I'm being I'm going back one. I'm gonna make sure to catch that. Right, so we've got one completed flat piece here and then so the interfacing goes up to about here which is nice um, it just makes it a little bit more sturdy feeling because I don't interface the cork um, itself on the flap so the pocket piece now that I have my tag down I'm just gonna glue this backing the lining to the cork 
just to keep everything in place. If you wanted to, you could um, baste all the way around this curve. And then I'm just gonna trim this up. Set that one aside. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab, this is my back bottom piece. I'm gonna lay this out on my mat and I'm gonna grab my flap and I'm gonna put it right sides together. I'm gonna to center it, make sure I've got this right. There we go. And clip this. And then I'm going to take my back top and lay it right side down as well. And so basically you're making a flap sandwich. And so that's the reason that I cut this flap indention that I made it longer because whenever it's all ready to go, this section will be really bulky, which you'll see later. All right, so I just need to top stitch across this here. So I'll do that. So I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance on this side. I'm gonna backstitch super well on this section. And then the next thing that you do is you flip the flap and the, this piece up and over, and then you're gonna finger press the fold towards the bottom and then I'm going to top stitch this. I'm going to lay it on the back bottom here. Just make sure that it's straight and then I'm going to baste this into place. And so you can see now, so if I had left this, po this pocket piece as big as the pattern calls for, the pocket would end up up here in all of this mess and then you have to fold the flat back in order to stitch it on and then this whole little section right here gets super duper bulky, which is why I lowered it by that 1.25 inch. And you can see once it's all assembled, it's only about 0.75 inches down from the top. So I just find that makes it a lot easier to work with. So the next step is we need to prepare the gusset. Normally this pattern calls for strap connectors that lay on the outside of the bag, very traditional looking. Um, but I am going to do the hidden recessed strap connectors. So I have measured down 1.75 inches and marked a one inch line because I'm using one inch rectangles for mine. And so what you do is you just cut I just cut this with an X-Acto knife just slightly under one inch. And what I'm going to do is slide with wrong sides together. From the back, I'm gonna slide my strap connector up. And I'm gonna leave about an inch on the back side here. And then I'm gonna do the same to this side. I just did this method on the Teddy backpack for my little sister's baby bag, and I really love how it looks. It just cuts down on, I don't know, I just think it's more visually appealing now that I've done it. And it's pretty simple. It took me a while to wrap my head around it, but once I got it, it was good. 
I think that I will be implementing this on a lot of bags. I also think that it provides a lot more stability. So I've made quite a few dollies, as I said earlier, and a lot of the problems that I had would be my friends using the bag, they would stuff them full and they'd get really heavy and these strap connectors would come undone. And so I was constantly having, not constantly, but I had to replace the strap connectors on probably two or three of my friends' bags. So this is good because I'm gonna put rivets in these. And I don't know, I think it'll be better. So now that I've got these um, set in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the machine and again, so this, I inserted the strap connector, I laid the gusset and the strap connector wrong sides together and I slid it through. And now I'm gonna go and stitch just above my line here at 1 8th. And I'm gonna do that on both of them. So now what you do is you slide your hardware on and then you're going to put this other piece of the strap down and pull it through on the other side. So because cork is a raw edge textile, I don't care that my um, bottom piece is flipped all the way out. Normally on this tutorial, it explains that you want this to be folded in and under, and then you sew that, but I'm going to omit that all together, and then I'm just gonna put rivets here. All right, so I'm just gonna make sure that my connector is pulled nicely, or pulled tightly underneath here. And then I'm going to make my marks using this handy dandy tool. Um, I got this from By Piera, but she's no longer making them. But I've heard that Tops and Bobbins has this. And this is just a rivet placement template. And I use it all the time. the conclusion that I must have mixed up my rivets at one point because half of the heads don't fit. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Make sure it's pulled nice and tight. Make my rivet marks here. such an annoying game that I have to play every time. There we go. All right, so now I'm just going to use my rivet press and get these pressed into place. 
Perfect. And you can see it just makes a really nice flush looking strap connector. Alright, so the next step is we are going to start assembling the outside of the bag. Oh, let me do this first though. So underneath this um, vinyl, which in my case is cork, but this accent piece, I'm going to trim away this excess. Ooh, making sure that I don't cut the actual accent. There we go. And now you want to mark the center. I've got the center marked at the top already. And then I've got these marked, but in chalk, so here we go. So what I'm gonna do is line up my marks and pin into place. I don't know what's happening. My phone keeps running out of storage, so if the videos look jumpy, that's why. Okay. So what I'm going to pay attention to is I'm going to try to get my top edges lined up with my gusset. Right now you can see that there's a little bit excess over on the front panel, so I'm just going to slide this up so that they meet up. And then I'm just going to ease this in and around until it all lines up nicely. Okay. Another thing that you can do is make snips in your panel, your front panel, and it'll make it lay nicer if you want to. All right, so now I need to go and top stitch my gusset to my main front panel. So I'm going to do this with the gusset on top. I feel like it makes it just a little easier to maneuver. I'm pretty sure that's how the pattern says to do it too. I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowance. So this next step can be a bit of a pain, but I really like the way that it looks. So basically what we're going to do is fold the gusset back onto the seam allowance. We're going to stitch all the way around and I am going to just finger press this first so that makes it a little bit easier. I'm not sure how much of this you'll be able to see because I've got to have my hands all up in the way on this step, but I will do my best to show you. Oh, I think I might be out of bobbin thread. Ooh, glad that started now. All right, let's try this again.
Hold on. So what that does is it makes just a nice rounded edge on the front of the bag. All right, so I'm just gonna trim my threads and then place my back panel and clip all the way around. Oh, I'm gonna make sure that my edges are together here. So because this section has the back pocket, it's going to be significantly thicker and you'll have to be extra careful when you're sewing it. But as long as you go slow, take your time, you'll be all right. So you probably noticed I just did that out of a habit, but you kind of just fold the flap in toward the middle of the bag here whenever you're getting up to this area. Alright, so I've got some excess here on this side, so I'm just going to ease this in like I did the other side. That was easy. Alright, so let's go top stitch that. So again, gusset side up. Start up here where the flap is coming out. I'm just going to, again, hold the flap down so I don't stitch it. Quarter inch seam allowance. Top stitch, or uh backstitch really well at the beginning. And so this is the section where you're sewing over all of those layers. So I just throw back stitches all throughout this section here. going to use pinking shears and trim whoops, trim the seam allowance down around the curves. like to finger roll all of my seams. And as you can see, so even though I made the pocket, it looked like it was significantly smaller, it's still a rather large pocket back here. Fit quite a bit of stuff. There we 
go. So now all we have to do is make the inside and then uh, the strap, and we're good. So for now, I'll just put this to the side. All right, so the inside comes together super quick. Uh, we just want to mark our centers. I'm just going to fold and mark it. Um, in the past, I have added an inside pocket, which can be done at this point if you want that. I just did a slip pocket along the back. Um, but because the bag itself is so tiny, I don't feel that it's like super necessary. I just did that because my customer asked me to. All right, then we're just going to do the same thing for the lining as we did for the outer. Not quite meeting up, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And I'm going to add some snips into this fabric. So adding the snips is a really common trick, but if you've never seen it before, what it does is it allows for you to turn the fabric and it opens up on those slits. I don't know if you can tell, but see how it's... So it makes clipping to curves a lot easier. Yeah, I guess I didn't mention it when I was going over the materials list, but I did interface my linings, which if you know me and follow me, I don't usually do that. And I usually don't even in the dolly. Um, but, you know, I'm trying, trying to turn over a new not-so-lazy leaf. All right, so on this one, I am going to start at a quarter seam allowance up at the top, and then I'm going to taper into a significantly bigger seam allowance probably around a half of an inch um, down and around the bottom just so that it sits nicely inside the bag. And then I'm gonna taper back out to a quarter inch on this side. Okay, so we have that. I'm going to trim this seam allowance down. I find that if you use pinking shears, because of the shape of the blades, when you flip it, it automatically gives it a nice curve because the pinking shears mimic the snips that I made along this bottom edge, bottom curve here, and it just allows it to look like a nice curve. You see? And then it just nests nicely in there, which for this particular bag, well, I guess for any bag for the lining, it's gonna look like this. We're not gonna actually flip it, but whatever. 
Okay, so we need to leave a turning hole in this other side. So it super sucks doing a turning hole along, like trying to stitch a turning hole along a curve. So I'm gonna do mine up the side here. So I'm gonna leave from here, one, two, three, four, here to here. And you do it wherever you want. The pattern says to do it down here along the bottom. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna do it here and then hopefully I can hide it a little bit better. So I'm just gonna line up and just, oh, let me snip my gusset. Do my little snips, snip, snip. God, I need to get these scissors sharpened. bit short so I'm gonna just bump those edges up and then do the old easing in around here. Alright, let's go stitch that bad boy together. So when I marked my birthing hole, I marked it on the actual back panel, but I'm gonna stitch with my gusset up. So I'm just gonna transfer those lines so that I know where to start and stop. All right, so I'm just going to start at top right. If you watch any of my other videos, then you'll remember how I turn and make the L shape whenever I'm creating these um, sections that you turn in because then when you do turn the bag having these stitches here um, it just creates like a nicer fold all right so I have to come down here Got a little crazy there. Come back and fix that line. All right, I'm just gonna trim these seam allowances. to leave the very tops of my seam allowances untrimmed because then when you're turning it um, it's I don't know it just like makes it lays nicer I think so that's why I do that if you've noticed alrighty so the next step is we need to put the outer and the lining together so I'm gonna flip my outer back out going to flip my flap 
flip flap inside. Try to lay it nicely so that it's not super jammed up in there because the cork will crease. But we're just going to try to get through this step relatively quickly. I'm going to flip this right side out. And put it inside. This is the moment of truth. Let's see if it lines up. So I want to line up all of my seams and I don't know if you noticed but I butterflied I flipped my seams to where they lay flat to help with stitching Ooh, that one lines up This is why it's so important to maintain the quarter inch seam allowance around the very tops of each piece because it, look, it went in nicely. A lot of times I have to go back and like reconfigure my lining so that it lays nicely, but this one actually worked out pretty nicely. All right, so I'm just gonna go and top stitch, or stitch rather, this into place. So usually I would take my extension table table extension off and I would sew with the cork side up but because I did interface this cotton I'm comfortable sewing on it if it's not interfaced then it might move around and bunch up and get yucky in there but not with the interfacing so I'm just gonna stitch um, using a half inch seam allowance all the way around this top section So I am going to trim down my seam allowance, but I'm going to leave it with a quarter inch overhang or a quarter inch seam allowance um, just because it'll give me a nice edge whenever I flip. But I like to take off a half inch just because it gives the flap a little bit more clearance. So now we're going to flip it through our birthing hole here. Try, ooh, I left it pretty small. Magic trick. Let's see.
All right, broke a sweat with that one. My hands are all cramped up. Okie doke. So now I'm just going to fold my birthing hole in on itself. And clip it and then stitch that down. So to make it look the same all the way around, I'm gonna carry the seam and just top stitch all the way around it, just so that it looks the same and the birthing hole blends in more. And depending on how that looks, I might do the other side too. Sometimes I employ this tactic, but it's not usually in my repertoire, but I also usually flip through a pocket. So I'm gonna go stitch this down. pretty cute all right so the next step here is to top stitch this top edge and so I'm just finger pressing really well and then I'm going to clip to make sure that nothing moves So these seams, this 
side, these sides here get super, super thick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start just after the seam and stitch all the way across and stop, and then do the same. Uh, I'll jump over this hump, and then I'll be able to stitch over this side, but I'm gonna have to go super duper slow. And for this, I am gonna pull my tray out. Too much dust under here. All right, so that was a moot point. I am gonna have to stitch from the inside. So you wanna be careful, you wanna make sure that you fold your flap down and out of the way. I'm gonna start here on the back side. Using a one eighth seam allowance right now. able to sew over those humps. I did skip a couple stitches, but don't think it matters. I'll uh, mess with it not on video so that you don't have to watch that annoying process. Yeah, so here we go. She's a cutie. So the last step um, to finish the bag is to make the strap and then attach it. So I have my length cut here and you can cut this as long as you want. And then I have um, my finished strap will be one inch wide. So I've cut a two inch wide piece for the base layer. And I'm just going to fold my pieces in toward the center to create a one inch wide strap. Um, I did something weird when I was cutting this second section here and it got all wackadoodle. So there is a gap here in the middle, but once I get over to this two inch wide area, it will, um, the sections will line up in the middle.
Now I'm going to go back and lay my accent color on top. Um, and you'll see, so I had to join two pieces together here. And when I am laying this on top of this piece, we're going to butterfly these little sections open to make it lay flatter. And then you just center it down the middle of your base layer. And so because my strap is going to be one inch wide upon completion, I made my accent color 0.75 inches wide. And you can see it leaves just a little bit of a peekaboo on either side. All right, so to make the strap adjustable, what you do is you're gonna put one side of the strap and loop it around that middle movable bar. And then you're gonna rivet that into place or sew it, if that's how you choose to do it. I need to mark my placements real quick. puncture. The only thing about doing your straps like this with the 0.75 accent color is that your holes will be super close 
if not laying on top of these stitch lines that you made. So you just want to be aware of that whenever you are considering using this strap design on your bag. And you know, you might want to use fray check or just scooch your your rivet holes in just ever so slightly so that they don't so that you don't punch out your stitches. But yeah, just something to consider. Oh my goodness. My cat just ran across my ironing board. Scared the crap out of me. Hey, kitty. All right, so you're just gonna rivet this piece into place. Hi, rookies. All the animals are coming to say hello right now. Oh my gosh. to get better rivets. Ay, ay, ay. I do this is I always have the bag facing me top side up or front side up and then I turn my strap so that the um, raw edge is to the outside of the bag I'm going to feed my strap in and so you'll notice that my strap it's right side to the bag Flip up and through and then we're just gonna slide it through slide the tri slide and you can see it encases that raw edge there in the middle and then you just want to make sure that your sharp isn't twisted and then we will move it into place over here but I'm gonna make my marks first to punch my holes on one side before folding it around because I found that sometimes the cork shifts when you're trying to cut through both sections at once or all the layers at once. And so I just eyeball it, fold it up about an inch and then punch through the other side. I usually just punch the first hole and then I put the rivet in to hold it into place and then I'll punch the second. rivets everywhere. There we have it. One completed dolly bag. Thank you so much for joining me today as I made this swoon dolly bag. I hope that you enjoyed the process and any amendments that I made or all the amendments, any of that, whatever. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Um, do me a favor, hit subscribe below. Feel free to watch this other video that I have um, linked. It will be in the rectangular box and um, repin or reshare this video for me that helps me get my patterns and my YouTube channel out into the world so any help with that is greatly appreciated so you can pin it join my Facebook sewing group uh, follow me on Instagram all of that information will be down below in the description box so once again thanks again for hanging out and I hope that you guys have a wonderful day